Hi, this is John Ellis from Optics for Hire. Today I have a short presentation on using optics with light emitting diodes. We will not be talking about thermal issues or electronic drivers which are important in the design of a LED based light fixture, but we will be talking about how reflectors and lenses are used to create the light patterns required, how to design them, and a range of costs for those optics. The intended audience of this presentation is developers of LED products rather than optical engineers or end users of LEDs. One of the first issues that you need to consider are what are the reality of physics versus what are your dreams for a product? How can you physically achieve getting the light from an LED to the spot that you want to achieve? And is it realistic given the laws of physics? There are a number of characteristics about an LED which have a big impact when you're thinking about how to design optics for an LED. One of the first and most obvious things about an LED is that it is basically a point source. At least it is a point source when compared to a fluorescent light bulb or a traditional light bulb. I say it is sort of a point source because unlike a laser, the light coming from an LED chip does spread in a beam pattern. And so if you are designing a system where you're coupling an LED with fiber, you'll find it's a lot more challenging than it might be with a laser. But in general, an LED is basically a point source, and this does have a... Uh, the first is that creating something that looks like a light bulb is quite difficult. Um, what you see here in this photo is the entry that Philips made to the Department of Energy X prize, a $10 million prize to create a drop-in replacement for the traditional light bulb. And that is a very difficult optical engineering task to take light from multiple LEDs, which are a point source, and spread it around 360 degrees. On the other hand, for certain applications like a street light, the fact that an LED is a point source makes it perfect for the application. In the street light, you want to get the light down onto the road, and you don't want it going in 360 degrees. So for applications of this type, an LED is perfect, uh, and the characteristics that the LED uh, and the characteristics of the LED as being a point source uh, are actually an advantage. Another thing to consider about LEDs is that some chips are bigger than others, and this does have a big implication for the design of optics like reflectors and lenses. Basically, the bigger the chip is, the bigger the die, the larger your lens is going to be. So if you're designing a fixture around a luminous device's LED and trying to use optics from some small Cree chip, it's just not going to work well because you have to scale the size of your optics to the size of the LED chip. There are a bunch of different options for taking LED light and making it do what you want to do. Um, some include diffusion film, reflectors, TIR lens pipes. Here are some photos of different examples, the diffusion film. There are a number of companies which um, sell these. One in the Boston area is called uh, uh, Fusion Optics. And they'll sell these films for use in a number of different kinds of applications. Sometimes fixture designers um, hope that they can just take a regular LED and put this sort of diffusion film around it, and they'll get a great beam pattern and great uniformity. Unfortunately, what they find is that the very thick films um, provide good uniformity but they block out too much of the light and so the uh, fixture isn't very efficient. But the films that block out uh, less of the light don't have the uniformity and so you can see the spot sizes of the point source LEDs. So for some applications a, a film uh, is the right solution, for many applications it's not. Another option is the reflector. Um, a lot of flashlights have reflectors, some interior lighting would have a reflector. Uh, a good option for certain applications, you have a lot less control of the light than you do in the third option, which is a TIR lens. These TIR lenses will sit right on top of the LED on the board, um, and you have a lot of control of where the rays of light go with that type of lens. And a final example is a light pipe. Those are used in all kinds of applications. Here we see a car stereo, and an optical engineer would have been involved in making sure that those green buttons are bright and uniform. So when you're trying to scope out how will your LED fixture work, 
there are a couple of parameters that the optical engineer is going to be concerned with. The first uh, is the beam pattern. The second is the efficiency. How much light do you want to get onto your spot? And the third is the uniformity of that spot. Now, you may be able to specify very precisely with an intensity profile like this uh, how you want the light pattern to look and with what uniformity and what pattern, but it's not necessarily that. You could just specify that you're going to have a 10-foot pole, for example, and you want a round spot with a 4-foot diameter as bright as possible and as uniform as possible. Some rules of thumb with a TIR lens, you can get anywhere from 80 to low 90 uh, percent efficiency. Um, reflectors, you can get higher efficiency, but again, you have less uh, control of the spot. The reflector's efficiency is based on the coating. There are uh, aluminum coatings, which might give you 92 or 93 percent efficiency. And then there are some other kinds of coatings and materials that could give you 98 percent efficiency. So it depends on the reflective material that you're using, and it also depends a lot on the spot size and shape that you want. Another thing that you should think about when you're defining efficiency is, what do you mean by that? Do you mean the rays of light which are coming out of the light fixture? Uh, or do you mean the rays of light which are landing on the spot pattern that you're trying to create? Because those might be different numbers. So when you're first thinking about designing an LED light fixture, I would suggest the best place to go for optics is the catalogs. Um, maybe this is even where you bought your LED. Companies like Future Electronics and Arrow will sell uh, lenses that are matched with um, LEDs. They might have a selection of wide, medium, and narrow beam lenses that you could use. And that would be a good place to try out um, uh, you know, different opportunities with different LEDs. However, a lot of people do eventually find that uh, for higher volumes they want to have their own design, they want to have more control, they want to own the design. And if that's the case, um, then there are a couple of steps and things that you need to do. The first is to get the ray set from the LED vendor that you're planning on using. The ray set is basically hundreds of thousands and millions of rays of light all measured uh, coming off a given LED chip. And that information is then used in a ray tracing. The user of a ray tracing program is an optical engineer and they will design an optic um, that fits with the LED and traces the rays of light. In the picture here, this is a type of TIR lens. TIR stands for total internal reflection. I should have defined that earlier. But this is a wide angle lens and they're trying to make as wide a beam spread as possible with the light from the chip. He's using a software program called ZMAX which is tracing the rays of light. And the material for these optics is most often acrylic. Um, sometimes people might use uh, polycarbonate but generally um, acrylic is used for these kinds of lenses. So what about costs? Well there's a huge variety of possible costs. Um, once you're gone into volume production for one of those little plastic lenses, you could pay anywhere from 10 cents to 250 for a big lens with multiple elements. You might also have some upfront tooling charges, and the mold price could be $7,000 or it could be $40,000. The difference depends on the number of cavities uh, in the mold, um, the difficulty of the lens, the size of the lens, but that sort of gives you a rule of thumb. Reflectors uh, can be cheaper or, or can be more expensive. It depends on whether you're coating your reflector with a simple aluminum coating or something a little fancier. So those are some of the issues we think about when we're designing optical fixtures that incorporate LEDs. If you have any questions, please shoot me an email. My email is john at opticsforhire.com. We have other YouTube videos about the design process, and you can also find out more information on our website, www opticsforhire.com. Hope this presentation was useful. Thanks for listening.